TV, and I am here with Charlie. Hi. And Charlie, we're at the uh, the GE Garage, and so tell us what's going on here. Uh, the GE Garage is a temporary workshop for uh, DIY and make and the maker community. What we're here to do is uh, showcase a lot of the tools and amenities that companies like Tech Shop bring to the bring to the game of the new maker revolution. What we're doing nowadays is trying to open source all of these industry standard tools to people who are more hobby-based people who are really trying to expand their skill sets and their tool sets. Awesome. Yeah. And so what are you working on right here? Uh, currently, I, I'm using a mold that was just made on a CNC mill, which is just behind us. Uh, and I am experimenting on an iPhone, an iPhone 4 case that has a square credit card reader on the back or a square credit card reader holder on the back so that you can uh, take and receive payments and not lose your square. Like yeah. the little rickshaw people that are running around that right. have the, right? Yeah, absolutely. Keep it safe. So, uh, you know, it's basically a live experiment because we're still working out all the kinks. Yeah. So the participants of South by Southwest Interactive can really tell that there's a lot that goes into manufacturing and R&D and product design. It's not just a, hey, let's pull some measurements and see how it works. Uh, I'm currently working with a couple of different types of plastic to figure out the shrink, the shrinkage of it, as well as the malleability of it, and what's going to be the best thing for us to be giving away. So as yeah. you can tell, this is a little bit more rubbery. And what's that made out of? Uh, this of is called TPE. It's um, it's, a, it's a temperate polyethylene, and then this is polypropylene, which is about 90% of the stuff that you use right. is either polypropylene or ABS plastic. Right. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Can we get it? Can you show us? Absolutely. It in action? Absolutely. So this machine is a Morgan Press injection molder. It's one of the smaller ones that you can get, but uh, totally works. Great. Um, what ends up happening here is this little plate right here is heated up to about 250 degrees. Uh, up here you have your you have your material temperature as well as your hopper temperature. You put your ABS plastic into the machine. It comes into this hopper to be about 450 degrees. So heat it up. We close this up, put the mold in. It's clamping up right now about six tons of pressure. And we're gonna shoot four ounces of, of uh, polypropylene plastic in there. Give it about 20 seconds to cure. And we'll pull it out and see if we've got a good mold. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, it's looking pretty good. So, is I, it hot? I, it's, it's 250 <laughs> degrees of hot, so that's why I'm wearing gloves. And there we go. We've got a we got a bit of plastic going on. Looks like we need to up the pressure a little bit so that we can get our corners going. Oh, because because it just it just shot just a little bit too little of material for me. So, awesome. Yeah, that's so I'll be cool. I'll be here for the next week trying to perfect my <laughs> technique. This is an Epilog 60 watt laser cutter. Uh, this is one of the most versatile machines at Tech Shop and here at the GE Garage. Um, it's what we call kind of a gateway drug. It's really simple to use. If anybody's ever printed a document before, which I think pretty much 100% of us have done, uh, you can use this machine. It's just as simple as hitting control print, and whatever is on your screen is going to be created here. There's two basic modes. There's raster etching, which is where the laser basically acts like a, a dot matrix printer. And it goes line by line by line, etches out your graphic onto your material, or it's going to do vector cutting, where the laser will follow a vector and then cut that shape out. So there's a lot of really cool things you can do with that. Like those are two basic modes, but let's say you wanted to, you're a musician and you want to do your own packaging, right? Like a digger pack, like one of those cardboard packages. You can cut out all kinds of graphics on it, cut out your basic shape, and then score really lightly all those lines and fold it together, and then you have like custom, custom packaging for all your products, you know. And uh, all that kind of stuff is pretty huge. I mean, there's also a lot of people that do mechanical design kind of stuff. You can do working gear, so you can get that kind of precision. Um, any kind of gift products, stuff like that, uh, architectural models, pretty much anything you can draw, you can make on here. Uh, so it's not really one of those things where you're like, what does this machine do? It does whatever you want it to do. It does pretty much anything. Um, and you can do tons of materials, leather, plastics, cardboard, all kinds of paper products, uh, and then all kinds of woods. You can etch coatings off of metal. So like, you know, those water bottles that are anodized aluminum or stainless steel, right. you can etch coatings off of that. You can do wrap around graphics, all that kind of stuff. Um, so sky's the limit. It's a pretty versatile machine, and they're really easy to use, and they're pretty forgiving. So uh, if you haven't, if 
you're kind of intimidated with fabricating or you don't have a whole lot of experience, it's a really good place to start. In the end, you know, I mean, we have a clear shop with tools and we have a lot of cool stuff for people to play around with and grow and learn, but at the end of the day, we're really about people becoming who they want to become. And the tools and making is kind of the process through which that happens. They manifest their destiny, they kind of become who they want to become, and it's, that's really why we're there. You know, that's what makes us really happy when we see people bloom into their ideal self. Like that's, that's the cool thing for us. Um, and just, it's just a lot of fun. You know, the crazy stuff that people come up with that, you know, we could never come up with. Right. None of us are as smart as all of us. That's kind of, kind of what it's all about. So. Right, the collaborative environment. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, Aaron, so much. Absolutely. Appreciate it. When Chessboro came up with the idea and labeled it Open Innovation, what he was really trying to do is to basically say the world is moving too fast, there's so much technological velocity that, that you just can't keep up and you need to be able to open yourselves up to outsiders to help you solve the major problems. How can the world afford not to innovate? As part of the global community, we must push the boundaries to be able to come up with these solutions. Innovation is not just having an idea. It's about turning that idea into reality. It's not just about the process. It's knowing how to mitigate the risks along the way. It's really about developing a certainty about something, knowledge about something, so that you can reduce risks. And not just knowing where the path leads, but where the path ends. Our job as problem solvers is to reduce the risk and you do that by reducing uncertainty. Having a diverse set of experts in-house is critical. That's why we have microbiology, uh, analytical chemistry, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, physics. By having all these viewpoints, we are able to spot the things, the information, the needs, the gaps in that to be able to, um, to, be able to solve the problem. That's what we do here at PCD. We create, we test, we build, we refine, we deliver. Finding the answers is in our DNA. Seeking out the best, less risky, most certain solution is what we do. We make the impossible possible and it works. PCD works.